bless you as you give to the bridge this morning. Feel free to come or to go to the back, whichever is closer, whatever you feel like doing. God bless you. This morning we got a special event in the life of our church, and uh, we got a young couple with their new baby. We're going to do a baby dedication, and since Dickie's grandpa, I'm going to let him have the pleasure, even though it really breaks my heart. There's nothing better than loving on babies and dedicating them to the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to let Dickie do this, and uh, you guys come on up. And uh, it's his daughter and son-in-law and grandbaby, number one. Number one. Oh yeah, I got a feeling you're going to have more than one. You had a litter, man. Come on. <laughs> well, this is my first one. Dedication, grandbaby, all of that. But there's nothing more precious than a baby. You want to look at something that is so far from sin and done no wrong, the closest thing we can get to the Lord is right there. Right there. That's a, just a gift. It don't know... Nothing wrong. Everything is just so innocent looking at it. But I'm going to read just a little bit, and then I got a paper. I'll ask Cass and Nick a couple questions. I'll call my wife and Marisa and Pastor Randy up, and we'll pray. But to dedicate, you see, they shouldn't have given me the microphone. I'm glad they won't do this online. There's no, I'm glad there ain't a clock back there. Because I, nothing stirs me more. I've watched my kids like a lot of us, grow up in church, and you don't know, but you instill in them the hope that one day, you know, that verse says, to, to show them the way in which they should go when they're old, they won't depart from it. That don't mean that you're, that, that, I'm just going to be plain with you this morning, that does not mean that you're going to get saved. It's up to you. That verse didn't guarantee you, but that meant I remember when I would get out doing something wrong and my friends would be doing something, that voice would haunt me. That's what that's all about. It haunt me. Do I want to do that or don't I want to do that? And that's what we're trying to do. But I want the meeting the other night, and I wouldn't try to embarrass anybody, but Paris, I don't know if she's still here or not, whether she's not or not, but that thrilled me. That's what I want for each and every one of our kids. She just stood up just as proud as a peacock to say there was... Basically, there was, she couldn't believe how amazing it was to have the Lord in her life. In the short term of what she said, not the once, not the twice, not three, she stood up three or four times and poured her heart out of how good it is to serve the Lord and to raise your kids that way. And that's the product of that, of her mom and dad doing that. That's what we hope here. You see, I had a drug problem when I was... Young, I got drugged to church Wednesday, Sunday, Sunday night. Revival, it was every night, here, there. And I wouldn't change the way I was raised for nothing, nothing in this world. But I'm going to read a few verses here from the Bible, and uh, I'm honored this morning not only to be able to help Pastor along, Pastor Randy, for such a group of people it's amazing the people that come in here and we're just plain down to earth people like i put on my post this morning we're just doing our best to get to heaven and that's hard enough but i'm gonna read from deuteronomy it probably ain't up there but i'll read it six four through nine the bible says hear o israel the lord our god is one lord and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart with all thy soul with all thy might and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, thou shalt be 
frontlets between thy eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and upon the gates. So this commands the parents to love God, and they truly wish for their child to one day love and follow God. And their lives must be an example of that. There's no time better than the beginning of a child's life to begin to impact them by your own personal relationship with Christ. The duty of teaching children belongs to the parents. At home with prayer, devotion, the example of your relationship with God. This church will support and assist these parents to raise their children in the fear and abomination of the Lord. A a domination, not abomination. (laughs) The value of prayer is a child's, in a child's life, rings deep into the heart of a firm foundation. Y'all remember the prayer, now lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. You can say it, angels watch me through the night. I always said, if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I wanted to know when I laid down at night, Whether I didn't wake till the light of another day, everything was all right. If I didn't wake up, I knew where I was going. That's what we have to instill in our children when they're young. Today, these parents stand united with the same heart that Hannah had for her miracle child, Samuel. These words come from 1 Samuel 1, 26-28. She said, O my Lord, as thou soul liveth, my Lord, and I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed. And the Lord had given me my petition when I asked for him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. See, children, we're just, they're just lent to us for a little while. Then after a while, they're gone. As long as he lived, he shall be lent to the Lord. Your commitment today to dedicate your child to the Lord will be anchored not by what you do today, but what you do for, from this day forward. I ask you in this moment if you receive this charge so that your child would be committed to the hands of our Lord, that God would put a hedge of protection around her, and that her steps would be ordered by the Lord. You can answer. Nick and Cass, do you acknowledge that Hadley is a gift from God? Do you believe that Hadley was wonderfully made by the Creator? Do you believe that Hadley has a soul and that this child is loved by God? Will you be an example of God's love as Hadley grows? Will you teach your child the Word of God? Will you pray for your child? Will you pray with your child? Will you commit to do all things to raise your child in a home that honors God? Will you be faithful to the church as you teach your child obedience and service to the Lord? Do you love Hadley and dedicate her to God? I charge you this day in the face of this assembly and before the Almighty God that you train up your child in the way she should go, that when she is old she will not depart from it. I charge you that you embrace your child with hands of mercy Voices of encouragement and hearts of love. So in closing, before we pray, with these words, David said in Psalms 127, 3 and 5, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty God, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So Pastor Randy, Marisa, and my wife will come. You guys can come. As we pray this morning, you all can bow your head and pray. It's, it takes all of us to help with our children. And it's not just because this one's my grandchild, but I know how hard it is to raise them in the world we're living in. So it takes all of us of the church to help these young people out and what they go through. So as we bow our heads this morning and pray, our most righteous and heavenly Father, God, as we come to you this morning, God, thanking you more for the gift that you've given my daughter and my son-in-law, God, that she is 
something special from you, God. And to, to think that, it, that the world that we live in thinks it's okay to get rid of them. God, and we pray this morning, God, that you was instilling them, uh, God, the heart and the mind, God, and the soul and the fire, God, to raise their child, God, in a way that you, that you see fit that's according to your word. God, we pray a hedge of protection around her. God, that you would strengthen them, God, as parents, God, that they would know the understanding, God, to follow you in everything that they do, uh, God, and that the word would be bound about their neck and upon their heart, God, that they would know the right and the wrong, God, that they would do exceedingly abundantly above that I could even think they could do because sometimes we think we know, but God, we know that you have made them parents for a reason. You have gave them this child for a reason, God, and we pray, God, as we lay hands upon them this morning. God, that you would protect them, that you would honor them for their duty, God, that they have brought the, her to you, God, to give her back to you as they did in the old day. God, Samuel's wife, Hannah, brought her back, the child, as Samuel's mom brought him and said, Lord, I give him back to you. If you'll give me a child, I will give him back to you, God, and that's what they've done. God, you've lent, lent her to them for a little while, and God, we pray this morning that you would be with them and every day that they go. That you would lead God and direct him. God, and we'll never fail to bow our head to give you praise, honor, and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kids can be dismissed. Go have fun down there. Or over there. Some of them are on the side. Amen. That was good. Thank you, Dickie. And Nick and Cassidy, thank you. I know we've got some other babies. If you'd like to have your baby dedicated, you pick the week and let me know, and we'll make it happen. So, very important part of the church. We know that baby dedication doesn't save a child. It's really a commission by the parent or to the parents Amen. to do your part that they'll know the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, no prayer on Thursday. Uh, the, I mean, the doors will be open for people to drop off stuff, so there will be a time if you want to come and pray. But uh, I'm not going to be here at seven opening it, and it won't be open till seven. So just so you know that this week is only real change in our schedule. And that's about it. This morning, I want to talk to you with a, a topic called Thanks Living in the USA. Thanks Living. Now, think about that. What is Thanks Living? Not Thanksgiving, but Thanks Living. It's about all of us as Christians, those who profess Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, Realizing how blessed we are and live accordingly. How we conduct our lives is very important. I don't know if you've ever been around uh, some people who claim faith, but they're just worry warts. They're woe is me people. The world's always falling in on them. It's not much fun to be around them. Amen. Amen. But how we conduct our lives is very important. 1 Thessalonians 5.8 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The key word in this scripture is give thanks in, not for. I imagine those folks up in, Putnam, or in Columbus Grove have thought, Thank you, Lord, that we had insurance. They're probably not thankful for the fire, but in the fire, there's things they can be thankful for. No one was injured. No lives were lost. See the difference? But most of us look at what we're going through, the circumstance, and choose to keep our eyes on the circumstance instead of on our source of hope and strength going through it. I've never been thankful when my car broke down. Not once. But I was thankful when it wasn't more serious than I'd first worried. See the difference? Not in. We're thankful in it, but not necessarily for it. Thanks living is the appreciation of this scripture. No matter what is happening in your life, you should be 
thanksgiving. Why? Psalms 118 verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. You may or may not realize this, but our Constitution was written in light that there was a creator, a God, the God, the one true God. They created a, a motto, one nation under God. Now we become one nation under any God. I used to say many, but now it's any. Whatever God you want, hey, it's cool. You're in a USA. You can do whatever you want. It's freedom, freedom, freedom. But when our Constitution was written, it was written based on the one true God, with Judeo-Christian principles throughout the whole thing. Didn't mean that you had to be a Christian uh, to be a part of the United States. Obviously, that's not what they were trying to say. They just said that we're going to base our morality, our judicial system, everything that we're about to do, we're going to base it on the theory that there's one true God, the Bible is what it says it is, and we have hope in that. Since then, we've drifted far from what it was created to be. No matter where our nation goes from here, his steadfast love endures forever through whatever. I hope no Christian will give up their hope depending on who becomes the next president of the United States. And I understand it's Mr. Biden one day, and then I understand Mr. Trump's got more evidence. And then it's Mr. Biden. And, it's Mr. and you know what, right now, Lord, your will be done. And I want to know that your steadfast love is going to endure whatever this thing falls out. And folks, if we the church don't get there, we're going to fall apart depending on how this thing all falls out. We got to know that he's got it regardless of who the president is. Because I got news for you. Whether it's Trump or Biden... Our country's still in a mess. It's still fussing and fighting. It's divided. And the only thing that's going to bring hope to America is his steadfast love. Not my goodness, not my good deeds, not my whatever it is. It's God. So we can be thanks living even in the USA as chaotic as it is. Why? Why? Because we give thanks in all circumstances. Why? Because his love endures forever. That's why. So no matter how bad life may seem, his steadfast love endures forever, even through COVID. Don't let this disease keep you paralyzed in fear. Or this virus. It's not even a disease. It's a virus. We've had viruses before. We're going to have them again. No doubt China's trying to create another one right now as we speak. Hello? And it's not the Chinese people, it's the Chinese government and a handful of leaders. You know, if you go to China, it's the fastest growing church in, a, in the world is in China. And they have to do it underground. Maybe God's going to stick us back underground so we'll start believing what we believe and living what we say we believe. We got it so easy here. You know, one of the greatest challenges we have, do we turn on the heat or the air today? And, it, you know, we don't even have padded pews here at the bridge, so y'all do suffer a little bit. <laughs> really? He's with us, even in the low times of life. The hard times are the times when nothing seems to make sense. Folks, as a, as a, a senior in high school, just... Wondering where God was in the midst of my chaos and the things that were happening around me. And, and I remember being out in my pasture one day and I'm, I'm, I'm like yelling at God. Where are you? Don't you see what I'm going through? What's wrong with you? Where are you? I thought you were a good God. If you're so good, why is this happening to me? If you can't talk to your God like that, you're talking to the wrong God. And you know what I believe he was doing when I was saying it? He was crying. He was trying to get my attention. But if I can't be honest with God, who can you be honest with? I wanted to know why bad things were happening to a good kid. 
I want to know why bad things were happening to my mom who I considered a saint. And I've learned since then she's not as saintly as I thought she was. She's just my mom. And she's awesome. But she's still a sinner saved by grace. But at that point, I was mad at God because of what my mom was going through. I was mad at God about a lot of things. And I don't remember the outcome of the conversation. He didn't speak like he spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. But he began to soothe my heart just that I could yell at him and tell him my frustration. I began to sense a little bit of peace in the midst of the chaos. It's one of those things, Brother Dickie, you can't explain it. You just know it. And I felt heard. Listen to me. You might need to go out in a field or back behind your barn or whatever you got and say, God, I'm about to pick a fight. Now, don't be rude. He is God, and he does have lightning. <laughs> but seriously, folks, there's times when you just want to yell at God and say, God, where are you? It's okay. He will not strike you with lightning. He will, as every way he can, reach down with his arms of love and wrap you up and say, I got you. Trust me. I believe this with everything inside of me. And that's what is, keeps us thanks living in the good old USA, even in the midst of chaos. God, I don't understand some cities and what they're allowing to happen. Let me and a couple of my country boys, buddies go up there. We can take care of that for you. Come on. You guys are awake? I don't know. It's going to get more fun. You see, everyone has tough times. Everyone. Some people are better actors than others. Some people are more private than others. I'm going to tell you, with the invent of, uh, of Facebook, there's nothing private anymore, man. I'm telling you. And if it's not you, it's your wife. And if it's not your wife, it's you. Listen to me. There's some things should be the better left unsaid. There's some things people don't need to know about you and your family. Do you ever think about when you share something about your family that your kids are now going to have to face questions every day? Do you know your mom said so-and-so? So So I I use this as a warning. I'm I'm telling you, some people are way too comfortable sharing their junk. And some junk needs to stay at home. Some junk needs to be brought to a counselor or pastor or something. And some people just like to be seen and heard. They they do these selfie Facebook things all the time, and it's like, I cool, I, you know, some of building businesses, whatever. Some of us just, I need to be seen. Come on, let's preach. I didn't even say this in the first service, so this must be for you guys. <laughs> so, everyone has tough times. How we handle the tough times is what makes the difference in the outcome. How will you respond? Can you remain positive in the negatives of life? Will you get better or bitter? You ever seen bitter church people? Boy, they're fun. It's like carrying around a sack of poisonous snakes with holes in it. No matter what you say, you're going to get bit. Will the Lord be with you? No, he's not. He's never been there yet. I'm sorry. Have you accepted Jesus as your? Of course I can't. I did. When I was 12 years old, have you prayed since then? Not really. Okay, that explains a lot. Come on. Bitter people are not fun to be around. And it can happen to any of us. And folks, it talks about the root of bitterness, how it even starts. Let me tell you, you doubt God. Root of bitterness can start overnight. Where is God? Why don't he do this? Why don't he do that? Why didn't he answer my prayer? Why didn't he do it this way? Why did he do it that way? Listen, be careful. Don't get bitter, get better. Many say that our country is going to hell in a handbasket. It can be hard to be thanks living in a nation who seems to be going further from God. And yes, our nation seems to have lost its way in many respects. I can honestly say if we fit that we fit the criteria of the nation that's gone astray according to the scripture. I'm gonna be reading out of Romans chapter one. I'm gonna read several verses, just hang on. Romans one twenty. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. In other words, there's no excuse not to believe in God in America. It was founded on God. 
We have propagated the gospel around the world from the United States. We have lost our way in many respects that I'll talk to, but there's no excuse for any of us to not believe in God. We're without excuse. You can't go to Colorado and go through the Rockies and see all the majesty and the beauty and say there is no God. You can't go to Southern Ohio and say there is no God. Now around here, I'm pretty sure God cursed us with flatness. And we need a couple mountains. I think he just forgot to finish the work. I need a mountain in Lima, okay? And for Oak Park ain't going to cut it. I'm sorry. But, but it, 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 there's so many things that have happened that we're without excuse to not believe in God. But it goes on in verse 21. For although they knew God, or maybe knew about God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. One nation under God. That offends some people. Really. I'm so sorry. We can't use Jesus on Facebook because people are offended. You know who's offended? Atheists and Islamic people. And I'm going to give you a warning today. I'm not near as worried about the atheists as I am about the Muslims. Muslims have an agenda. And I'm not afraid to call it out. We're not live, so I can say a little more than I did in the first service. Because I really don't want to die today. But the truth is, Islam has an agenda. Kill all, get rid of all the infidels. See, we want you to get Jesus or you go to hell. They want you to get Jesus or they want to shoot you. Or get Allah, rather. They want you to get Allah or they can shoot you. You're an infidel. Now, are they violent today? And we know about all the, you know, I got to be super uh, sweet and nice because not all Muslims are radicals. Islamic is radical in nature and how it's created. I'm not near as worried about atheists as I am Islam and Muslims. Because they want to take over America and they want to take our freedom. They want us to live by Sharia law and they want us to do life their way. I wish our founding fathers were still around. I got a feeling none of them Muslim people would be in office today. And they're voted in and now they're on the national level. Folks, they don't believe what we believe and they don't give a nothing. I got to be careful because kids in here. They don't care anything about Jesus. They hate him. They're the ones that don't want one nation under God. They're the ones that are offended by our faith. Now, do I hate Muslims? No, I want to show them Jesus. And you know one of the greatest ways to witness to a Muslim? I learned this in Bible college. By a guy that has won millions, not millions, thousands of Muslims to Jesus. He always says, I start the same way. Okay, so we see things a little differently. But you do believe Jesus was a, was a prophet? Yes. Do you believe prophets would lie? No. Well, didn't Jesus say he was the son of God? Boom. And now they're all curious, like, uh-oh. So you got to make them doubt what they believe before they'll understand God and try to believe what we believe. That's a good witnessing tool. I just gave you a tool. So I don't hate Muslims. I hate what they stand for because they're against God. They don't like Jesus. They only made him a prophet to shut some people up. But now we're using that to get people to second guess what they believe. Didn't share that in the first service either. Let me move on. They neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their heart to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. In other words, they had done so much turning away from God. God said, okay, if you're just going to completely deny me, then I'll just turn you over to whatever you want to do. It's exactly what happened. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. That, my friends, is what's happening in the United States of America, that somehow there's a better plan than God's plan. Now think about this. If you work and become successful and prosper, that's what God wants. He wants you to work hard. He wants you to make right choices. And he wants to bless you. If someone's down and out 
and they can't work, they're having a hard time, that's where the church steps in and we help each other out. But never did he mean for people to create a lifestyle of taking handouts. Wait a minute, am I in the right church? Let me say it again. He never created us to have a habit or a lifestyle of receiving handouts. Because after a while, after generation after generation, there comes an expectation, you owe me. I can't work. Baloney. Your grandma couldn't work. Your mom didn't work and you choose not to work. I'm not going to help that. The Bible's very clear, man. Don't work, don't eat. Wow. I said we're not live. Folks, listen to me. It's truth. Everyone, I, I, I know real need and I know fake need. And I love to meet real need. Sometimes it's hard to discern the difference. <laughs> but God never created us to live a lifestyle of receiving handouts forever. He wants you to work. There's, there's self-worth that comes in that. There's a glorification to God that says, God, you gave me a talent. And look, I'm making a living with it. God, thank you. That's pretty cool. And then we trust him. And he makes a difference. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. They don't believe we're no longer one nation under God. It's any God. You create it, it's good. Oh, but that Jesus thing, it's got to go because it's offending too many people. That should tell us right there that we must be serving the right guy. If everybody hates him but the ones that serve him, that's a good indication. This is real, just for the record. All right. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. When God gives them over, it may seem as if they were born this way because it becomes second nature at that point, and it seems so natural. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. In some scriptures, that's called, in some translations, it's a reprobate mind. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossip, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Well, Randy, that's a lot of stuff there. Yep, sure is. And before you think I'm a, a homophobe or a, a homosexual hater, you need to hear my heart. I'm going to preach the truth, not to offend people, but to give them the truth. But if it's truth and they're going against the truth, it's probably offensive. I get that. But if I don't preach the whole truth of the word of God, I'm guilty of what I hate. That people tiptoe around stuff because they're afraid of offending somebody. Folks, the word of God didn't come to bring us all together. It came to separate us. Brought division. You got to choose. Do you want to keep living like you think you're supposed to? How you feel about yourself? Because that's how you were born? Read that scripture. Study it. That's exactly what it's talking about. There's a choice to be made by all of us. Several years ago, when I, right after I came to Lima, I was going through a, 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 some, some issues of things God was working on me. And one of them was my attitude towards homosexuals. I grew up in a small town, man. People didn't come out of the closet. They'd bury you under the closet. It just didn't happen. And I'm not saying that's good. I'm just saying that's how I grew up. And uh, as a senior in high school, my cousin, who had given me a ride for two years in a row to school before I had my license, came out that she was a lesbian. Man, it rocked my family. Rocked my aunt. Rocked my uncle. Rocked me. But, you know, I never could dislike my cousin, because she came out as a lesbian. She was my cousin, man. I loved her. 
I didn't understand her. I didn't understand all this stuff. Because, again, folks, I was, I was a, like 10th grader before I even knew what homosexual meant. It wasn't common back then. You guys, you young people, y'all growing up with it, and people all around you say they are, and, and it's just become a common thing. When I grew up, it wasn't common. People weren't coming out. I didn't even know what it meant. But as I was going through this process where God was trying to change my attitude, he softened my heart to recognize I can't reach them by judging them. I got to reach them with the truth and I got to reach them that I care about who they are. And I have no problem. I work with some folks that, that, that claim homosexuality, whatever. I don't care. They're people. I work with them. I treat them with respect. I don't try to treat them any differently. And that was God. Because I was very judgmental. And God says, what if they were judgmental about your sins? Well, that's different. Why? Because they're my sins. You can't reach people hating them. So I'm not advocating hate. I'm just advocating the truth. And how they got there. And it's because our nation has accepted it. You know, some, some of the young people today want to blame me, you know, my generation. Well, why'd God get taken out of everything? Hey, it happened when my parents were on the watch, not me. There was no prayer in school when I got there. I wasn't old enough to vote. I didn't read the Bible anymore. Roe versus Wade. I was a kid. I don't remember it. See, a lot of the decisions that have happened that started separating the United States from Judeo-Christian truths happened on somebody else's watch. And now we're trying to fix it. Well, it wouldn't have been easier to fix it back then when more people believe this than believe all the chaotic things that we believe today. So I'm not advocating we go out and try to change all that stuff. I'm advocating let's share the truth in love to anybody that will listen by how we conduct our lives. You know, one of the greatest witnesses that you have is your attitude about this chaotic world. Can you practice thanks living in the good old USA even when it ain't so good? Because with Jesus' help, we can. And what greater witness to give our neighbors than peace and chaos? I want to get online and I want to rip things up about this election. And I want to click on this and click on that and click on. And God says, shut up. Show them Jesus. I want to right the wrongs of the world. Show them Jesus. I am. No, you're not. you got a horrible attitude. Really? Y'all don't talk to God like that? I argue with him all the time. And it's hard. And most of the time I lose. Because he's right. And I'm usually wrong. Because i got an agenda. i got, I got, I got passion. There's a lot in this list of wickedness. And i got a feeling this describes our nation in way too many ways. We need God in America again. But the question we got to ask ourselves is, does any of this apply to me, us? Deal with that. I can't deal with this for you. I got to deal with this for me. And I got news for you. Unsolicited advice is rarely received. Well, I got a word for my brother now. Be careful. <laughs> Don't speak for God when you're in your flesh. Unsolicited advice is rarely received. Now, somebody comes to you and says, what do you think? Man, pray hard about how your delivery comes across. Because we can help them. But Randy, I thought this was about Thanksgiving. It is. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving week, and I'm supposed to preach a nice little message and give you, you know, five kernels of corn to set on your plate and everybody tell five things you're thankful for. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? It's Thanksgiving, man. you got to be nice. This ain't the nice. I had a nice message. I really did. And then God said, no, not today. These people are living in chaos. Won't you deal with it? <laughs> I'd rather do a nice little message, God. Keep everybody happy. They'll give and the church will grow and. If we only live thankful sitting in our own house at our own table and grumble and murmur and complain and judge and have a bad attitude the rest of the time, we're doing God no favors. 
do I want you to sit down Thursday and go around the table and say what you're thankful for? Yeah, you should do that. But when you walk around town, when you go about your business, are you living thanksgiving? See, it's hard thanks living in a nation that seems bent on exchanging the truth of God for a lie. And yet in the midst of all that is bad, we're still the most benevolent nation on planet Earth. Granted, some of our benevolence is aimed at Mother Earth and her creation. We need to be careful not to worship the created things more than the Creator. Verse 25, it's not Mother Earth, it is Father God. Now, I love you. I'm not taking the catalytic converter off my car. I'm not burning styrofoam cups today. But folks, the Bible is very clear. This world is going to burn. So try as you may to save it. Maybe he's going to use all the natural things or the unnatural things we've created to burn it. But at some point, God's just going to set it on fire. It's just going to be consumed. But we don't have to worry about that. He says there's also going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That's where we're headed. So don't worry about Mother Earth. Worry about Father God. So instead of spending all my energy on trying to save the environment, I'm just trying to make sure that when it burns, you ain't here. Hello? I'll spend my time doing that. You need to know Jesus. Again, I'm not stupid. I'm not trying to be anti-sensitive to the environmental people. I get it. But folks, read the book. Boy, I made a lot of friends today. Sometimes we at the church can get down in all the bad that we have seen and even give up hope. Some don't vote because it doesn't matter. Some have decided to stay in little holy huddles, I call them. Just hang out with church people and pray and worship and sing kumbaya while the world goes to hell in a handbasket. They're only concerned about themselves. That is not a good response. He says, occupy till I come. That means you better be busy about the master's business when he shows up. Well, Lord, I was in prayer. Well, why weren't you out sharing what I was telling you? Well, I didn't hear you. Yeah, because you never shut up talking. When we stand before God and we give account for how we lived and did and didn't do, we're in trouble, just so you know. Deuteronomy 8.10 says this, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Folks, as bad as some of the chaos is in America, there's still a lot of great things about this country. And if you haven't traveled west of the, uh, the, the Mississippi, you need to try out the western part of the United States. There's some beautiful country out there. And it'll re-encourage you that, wow, there is a God. Look what he did. you be driving along desert, 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 white cap mountains way off in the field. Desert, desert, desert. Flat, 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 Kansas, 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 you know, Nebraska. And all of a sudden you see the Rocky Mountains, you're like, whoa. And you'll see them for hundreds of miles. And then you drive up in them and freeze to death. It's awesome. There's snow up there year round. It's cool. Cold, actually. That's why you're saying it. Listen to me. There's so much God gave us to enjoy. And I'm just talking about the United States. Now, Europe is closed, but someday go to Europe. There's some cool stuff in Europe. I love Europe. I got to go to Swiss House last year. Whoa. And it's straight up, man. There's no gradual climb. It's like, whoa. God just took it and just whoop. It's cool. God gave us all that to remind us. There's a God who created all this. It didn't happen because two atoms split. He created it, and he wants us to give thanks for it. In all the bad of the United States of America, we have eaten well, and we are satisfied. I'm not satisfied with where we are as a whole, but we can be thankful for where we are as individuals in Christ Jesus because his love endures forever. And no matter what, if you want to push God's agenda and his way of living life, Or the agenda of those exchanging the truth of God for a lie. Our veterans and current military fought hard for each of us to have that right. They fought so we'd have freedom of speech. 
even if it goes against God, even if it goes against the United States of America. But I don't know about you. I don't want to tread on them. I am still proud to be an American. The goal of the Christian must be to live in such a way that people can see that we are thankful in all situations and in all circumstances. Some Christians are just pouty and down all the time. And nobody wants to be like them. Don't be that guy. Amen. Let's stand. Folks, I'm passionate about what I'm saying. But I'm not judging anyone in this room that may be struggling with any one of those issues. I care about you and I love you enough to tell you the truth. No, sometimes you'll feel threatened by the words of a, a, a gospel minister or preacher that says, hey, these things are wrong. And you're like, well, it ain't wrong. I do that. I get it. But don't be mad at the messenger. You go talk to God. And if you feel God created you a certain way to do certain things, ask him about it. I promise you he'll answer. Because he loves you way more than I do. And he cares about that when the end of your life comes, that you spend eternity with him. That's why he gave us this book. That's why he gave us instructors. That's why he gave us the opportunity to come to church and know the truth and be set free. I love you. I care about you. I'm not judging. Do not hear judgment from this man. I'm not going to do it. But I will tell you the truth. And for that, I hope someday, maybe not today, it's kind of like pointing your kids in the right direction. They might not like the direction you tell them, Dickie. But someday they will. Like you and I, we're thankful we had a drug problem. Drug to church every time it was open. But man, I didn't like it when it was going on sometimes. Y'all remember back in the day, you got to be old for this. They didn't have a Disney channel. They had a Disney night. Sunday night at 6. You know what time my church started? At 6. You know what time the movie was over? 7. At Disney movies. Every Sunday night, I was like, well, Dad, I just want to watch Disney one time. Disney will send you to hell. Get to church. I just wanted to watch some Disney shows. How bad? I wanted a sinner. They were nice. They didn't have political agendas back then. Hmm. Enough said. The last thing we're going to do is practice thanks living. Don't even know what time it is. Dickie took some extra time, so give me five extra minutes. Five extra minutes. Here's what we're going to do. Carrie was almost giving it away because she's talking about learning people's names. For the next five minutes, I do not want anybody to do that door. Paul, tackle them. I want everybody to give me five minutes of thanks living. I want you to meet somebody you may or may not know and get to know them a little bit. Thanks living is, 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 is being caring. Reach out your hand and say, I'm Randy. What's your name? What are you doing this week? Got any plans? Or maybe tell us something you're thankful for. Or maybe you have a prayer request. Share that with them. But if we don't get to know each other in here, and some of you, it makes you really uncomfortable. I mean, you're already sweating bullets right now just thinking about shaking someone's hand in COVID. So you don't have to shake. You don't have to hug. That's up to you. Fist bump. But get to know somebody's name. Why? Because, folks, if we can't be thankful in our living in here, we ain't got a chance out there. Because people in here are rooting for you. Man, they want this to happen. I mean, we come for fellowship. We, we come to, to, to have, feel like we matter. We're the one. I want every person. I don't want anyone to leave today and thinks that somebody doesn't know their name. At least one person should have learned their name before you leave. So will you please do me the courtesy? Give me five minutes. Shake, fist bump, get to know somebody's name, especially somebody you don't know. Will you do it? If you don't, Paul's going to get you. Now Dickie's back there. Now you got to go through two of them. Folks, I love you. We need to love each other. It's the greatest witness we have as the church. They'll know us by our love for one another. Let's love on each other for just a few minutes. God bless you. Make it a great week. May God go with you. May he keep you. And may you celebrate Thanksgiving for him today. I love you. God bless you. Do not leave.